said that uh, women learn this process easier than men. They interpreted that as they don't need to come to class to <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't know that we've ever had this where I've started the class and had zero of one of the genders being there. But apparently, when I said that on Tuesday, they took it as, oh, well, we don't need to be here. So uh, I'm sure some will show up here. So, uh, wins or successes? What good things have happened? Another day we lift. We, wake, we woke up to to live another day. Yeah. So to use Rick's, you woke up and there wasn't a chalk line around you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, There's an avenue that I'm working on. Is that, um, I own a trampoline park, and, um, and everybody that comes into the trampoline park has to sign a waiver. And on that is their name, address, phone number, email address. And I got that live database, and um, I thought there was a lot more, but there's 16,000 of them that wow. I was able to email it to. And so far, um, nothing's come of it, but I'm hoping that there is. And um, I'm also going to, I just did that to the emails. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get today a phone number list. I'm going to go through and call everyone. Perfect. That's great. Just add to the waiver. That by signing this, you agree if you ever sell your house, you'll use me. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you getting your list from? Um, well, everyone that comes into the park has to sign a waiver. No, you said you were going to find a list somewhere. No, you already had it. No, oh, I have Oh, you already have it. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. And I have my computer guy put together the database and gave me a, a list, and I emailed everybody. Nice. That was just yesterday. But awesome. Yeah, yesterday. Cool. But now I'm gonna call. That's great. Congrats. That's cool. That'll be a, be great. I'll be. I'll bet you come up with some deals out of that. I hope so. Yeah. So awesome. Good. Who else? Feeling much better prospecting. Good. Or now, mm -hmm. uh, booking appointments. Good. Awesome. I haven't booked any appointments, but I'm good. <laughs> okay. Good. That's a good start. All right. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Um. Again, a lot of you know me. I'm Paul Jolly. I'm with the Inspiro Financial. We're just on the first floor. If you get a chance to come in and introduce yourself, please do so. Um, we'll leave you a little kernel of information today. It's a uh, real case uh, scenario. Um, I can make sure. Oh, I've got a good market too. So that's a great thing. Um, we had an incident just recently where an individual bought a condo. Okay. And uh, uh, the condo, uh, the loan on the condo is uh, in such a way that we obviously have to have insurance on it. But, you know, there's an HOA that's associated and so forth. And a lot of times the HOA will cover the, what is known as, let's just say this is the condo. Um, walls, uh, you know, walls out. Okay. In other words, if something happens, the HOA and the community will pay for walls out. But they don't pay for walls in. And Russ, what happens if you don't get coverage for walls in? You're responsible. You're responsible. And we had an incident where the buyer said, well, they are insuring it walls out, and so anything that happens out here, whatever, it's going to be taken care of. And that's all well and good. And that's all we require. But uh, what happened was, is there was a flood. Well, let me also say that there was a statement that, well, why do I have to get all, why do I have to get other insurance? Well, you don't have to. We only require, we only require this. And so what took place is, after closing, they had a flood in the basement. And is that walls in or walls out? Was it water from in the basement or outside the house? Came in from outside the house, but it came into their basement. So, um, sorry. So what they were stuck with was then with no insurance. And this happened a month later. And so they're dealing with 
uh, mitigation, which is uh, equating to about $10,000. <laughs> they called us up and said, well, you should have forced us to have walls in insurance. Is that our job? No. We just say, hey, this is what you need. And the other fact is, is they got called by their insurance agent twice and never returned the call to their insurance agent to put any binder in place or get the insurance. So when you're dealing with um, the other issue is walls out had a 25K deductible. <clears throat> So even if there was any other things that Walls Out was going to cover, $25,000 deductible. $25, so in other words, the owner of the condo is on the hook to pay for that uh, remediation. So just be aware, you're not going to probably you know, deal with it too much, but if a Client comes to you and says, "Do I need walls in insurance?" You tell them, "Absolutely, you need to. You need to talk to your insurance agent and follow the instructions of the insurance agent." But that's what happened, and they're on the hook for ten grand. It's, he didn't have insurance. If the water came from inside, it was still the same situation. Yep. So they're he's, they're dickering with the. Well, <laughs> there's not much to differ with. They got to come up with the first twenty-five thousand dollars in cost, even if they get some remediation there through the other, um, you know, homeowner warranty and so forth. They don't, they don't cover that stuff. So anyway, that's a little kernel of information. So, um, any qu thoughts, questions, comments, observations that uh, you have? If a uh, person had a regular home and they had a homeowner's policy that would have been covered yep right? yeah it's going to be required because homeowner's policy is going to be walls in and walls out but for condo and or other things it's usually is is in so okay. anything to add to that pretty high deductible they do that for a purpose uh so they don't have to be on the hook <laughs> premiums are a whole lot cheaper at twenty five thousand. Oh yeah yeah yeah, but if you know you don't have the money, uh, that just seems stupid to me. Yeah. You know, like I used to be an HOA president for the town home I used to live in, and that was like the number one concern of all of us. We had 90 doors, and this is back in 08 and 09, and out of the 90 doors, I think we had 10 of them that were people just walked away from. So yeah. we were only receiving 80 doors worth of, and that was their, their biggest concern, and so uh, every meeting was, how do we save money? How we, and that's what one of the things they, and that was the homeowners got together. So we raised our insurance deductible. We did this, we did that. In this particular instance, you know, the uh, buyer is coming back to the agent too, and you know, give them a hard time <laughs> saying, you know, ah. the thing is, it's not the agent's fault. It's not our fault. It's not, uh, you know, it's not the insurance agent's fault. It's, uh, you know, the owner has to be aware that, you know what, this is what's taking place. These are the risks. These are the contingencies. These are the things you need to consider. And as you're a, a real estate professional, you probably will be put in that position. Well, what do you think? And that way you can provide an opinion. Thank you. Very good. Um, anyone need a journal? We have these Inspiro journals. Available if you need one. Okay, very good. Thank you, Russ. That took a little. Oh, I'll take, I'll take a spare. I'm about to All right, great. And uh, didn't mean to take a whole lot of time. Hopefully, that was okay. You good? Okay. In fact, you want to take another hour and a half? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I want to start with just a little bit of a refresher from what we, we talked about, and, and then we're going to build on where we were the other day. So top three complaints about real estate agents, one was that we don't return calls, two is that we don't listen, and three was that we waste their time. Now, where that comes from, again, just as a reminder of what tends to happen is that when we are communicating, we tend to communicate one thing, but we actually mean something else. And, and meaning from that, your brain, 10% of who you are is conscious, 90% is unconscious, 
And in your brain, it stores this information in these discrete locations, the pictures, the decisions, and the feelings in these three different areas. <laughs> when somebody is saying that we didn't listen and we wasted their time, where that comes from is because they will say something like, I want to buy a home high on a hill with a view of the city lights. We then go out and show them homes that are high on a hill with a view of city lights, but we relate to it in terms of what it means to us, not what it means to them, and not recognizing that when they say they want the home high on the hill with a view of the city lights, it's not the home high on the hill with the view of the city lights that they really want. This is the crucial piece that you need to make sure you understand. When they say they want the home high on the hill with the view of the city lights, that is not really what they want. What they really want is some benefit that that home high on a hill with a view of the city lights is going to bring to them. So think of that this way, is what happens is they will talk to us about features. A feature is going to be a home high on a hill with a view of the city lights. That's a feature. But that's not what they're buying is the feature. What they're buying is the benefit that that feature provides. They're looking for a benefit out of that feature. And really, that's what they want. When we ask them what they want in a home and they tell us, home high on the hill with view of the city lights, they're telling us at this level. But the reason they're telling us at that level is because they don't know how to explain it at this level, that what they're looking for really is the benefit that that feature is going to provide to them and so the best that they know how to do it is to say it as a home high on a hill with a view of the city lights because the information to explain what they're looking for is stored in these pictures, the decisions, and the feelings. And when those three things reintegrate and come back together, it equals what? Crystallization. Okay, good. Crystallization. Crystallization is the moment when that reintegration occurs, the pictures, the decisions, and the feelings all come back together again. Our job then becomes to get people to crystallize. Now, in this process, what you probably started to see on Tuesday with this is if we do it right, we start to get a whole bunch of information. And, and probably, I, I should have thought this through a little bit before just this second, but I've got water in this cup. If I were to take, what did you say, sure? I said sure. You want me to find out? <laughs> if I were to take a, some more water and I pour it in here, eventually it's, it's just filling up the cup. Eventually what's going to happen is it's going to get to where, could I put water in here to the point that it's actually even above the rim? No. Yes. Yeah, yes. You can get a mask. Oh, okay. that, it, it, just slightly, but it would be just there's a little bit of a. What creates that? Why Why am I able to do that without it spilling over? Pressure from water. Yeah. So it's surface tension. Is what happens is it creates this surface tension to where I could actually have water just above the rim on this. But what happens when you put the next drop in? Like I add one more drop to that. It all flows over. It all then flows over. That's what we're trying to do. Think of it that way as I'm talking about creating this and causing crystallization. What we're trying to do is similar to that. Picture it that we're just trying to get information to fill up this cup, so to speak. And we just keep filling it up, filling it up, filling it up. Where we're going to create this surface tension to where what we're going to do and, and how we're doing that is through asking questions that get them picturing it. <laughs> the decisions they've made about it, and then that one extra drop that we're going to add in is where we'll bring in the feelings. And once that happens is where crystallization should occur. Now keep in mind, people communicate one thing, but they mean something else. So when they said, I want a home high on the hill with a view of the city lights, they mean something different than that. And what they mean is the benefit that that's going to provide to them. Now, you saw a little bit of this on Tuesday when I went around to everybody and said, what does having the home high on a hill with a view of the city lights mean to you? And, and you each gave me, really, we came up with, I think, three or four different things that that could mean. 
And we talked about privacy or seclusion. We talked about prestige. We talked about health. All of those things are really the benefit it provides. Now, I shared with you the story of me going to California, learning this, and that I said, when, when somebody asked me, describe for me the ideal home, what I described was a home with one acre of land, a swimming pool in the basement, two-story. Now, what would be some benefits to having one acre of land? And, and we talked about, and, and people shared with what some of those were. But when I said I wanted to buy a home on an acre of land, and then I went and bought a house on a quarter acre, and that's where this whole term buyers or liars comes from, is people will say to you, I want to buy a home on one acre, and then they turn around and buy one on a quarter of an acre, which is what I did. You would look at that and say, yeah, see, buyers are liars. The, the truth is that, that the, or the problem is, we listen to them talk about the feature when that's, that's not what they're buying. They're buying the benefit that that feature provides. For me, saying I wanted a home on one acre of land, the, that's the feature. But what was the benefit I wanted it for? Do you guys remember what I said? You could play soccer. No, oh, not soccer. Baseball. Baseball. Soccer. Baseball. Anti. Anti. Soccer. Football. <laughs> Just teasing. But actually, some of my, a couple of my boys like soccer. But yeah, baseball. <laughs> it was. I wanted to be able to go outside. But really, even basketball. Like I wanted to just have room to be able to go outside and not have to drive a long ways to get to a park in order to go do that. But yet I bought a home on a quarter acre lot, but I already asked you, what's right outside of my neighbor, my backyard? Park. Park. Yeah, the community park, the neighborhood park, which is way more than one acre. And and literally with my 11-year-old, I could go, it's big enough, I could go over there, throw a baseball, he can hit it as hard as he can, and it doesn't land in anybody else's yard still. Like that's better. On one acre, I couldn't have done that. So actually it's better for me to have gotten a quarter acre, it met my needs better. That that's what I want you. If 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 I can get you to understand this piece of it, it will change the way you do the business because they don't necessarily need the feature. Meaning, when they say to you, "I want an acre," they don't have to have an acre. You got to figure out what they want the acre for. And then you can get into the benefit. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't scenarios that, yes, they have to have an acre. Like, that is going to be the case. There are going to be times when somebody says, I want an acre, and they need an acre. Meaning, like, if let's say they have a horse. Like, you're probably not going to get away with a .10 of an, or a, a condo if they've got a horse that they... And now, that's not 100% true, but, but meaning, like, it's possible that they don't board the horse somewhere. But... Just keep in mind, there are going to be scenarios when, when they describe the feature, they have to have the feature, but it's but only because that's the only way to meet the benefit. But it's the benefit that they're looking for. Now, are you understanding? Are you, if you're clear, say yes. 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 Okay, good. Because if, you, if I can get you to understand that piece, it'll totally change everything. Because that's where this whole buyers or liars thing comes from is because they show up telling us the feature, but they're not really looking to buy the feature. They're looking to buy the benefit. The only way they know how to explain the benefit to you is through this level, the conscious level, which is where things are rational, reasonable, logical. They haven't crystallized yet, so they don't really know for sure what it is that they want. So they're doing the best that they can by telling you what they want. Your job now becomes to figuring out really what is the benefit. Now, there's one other piece to this. Features have a price tag. Benefits do not. Meaning, when somebody shows up and says, I want a home on an acre of land, is there a price associated with that? Absolutely. But, similar to what I just said to you guys, I bought a home on a quarter acre lot which means I, it didn't cost as much money as if I would have bought one on an acre lot, but my benefit still was fulfilled. Let me take this even just a little bit further to really make sure you get what I'm saying. You, it is possible for somebody to show up telling you what they want in a home and describe a $15 million home 
and they can only afford 300000 It's possible that they show up telling you, these are the features that I would want. Now, remember, I started this when I brought up Justin, and I said, describe for me your ideal home. It's possible that he describes something he can't afford as his ideal home. It's okay because he's not buying any of those features, but he's got to buy the benefits. So what I mean is this. If somebody came up here and, and I had them do, and we, I said, describe for me your ideal home, and they described it as if they had all the money in the world, the one thing that is not going to change is the benefits they're looking for. So it doesn't matter what they, what they can afford. There are certain benefits they're looking for, and you can find them. This is the key. You can find the benefits in any price range. Meaning, if I said to you that I wanted one acre of land, but I could only afford $150,000, how could we meet that need in that price range, even though, let's even change it. Let's say I want five acres, but yet I only qualify for 150. Like, how are we going to do it? Go buy the seven acres of land for $75,000 and hire me to buy. <laughs> and do what? Go buy the seven acre lot and hire me to Oh, and hire them. Okay. <laughs> But that is one option. So that is one option is it's probably exists, meaning like there's probably somewhere out in the middle of Utah that you could buy a thousand acres for 500 bucks or something. That probably exists. But that may not necessarily work. So I, I want you thinking through how could, if you had somebody that says, I need to be in Salt Lake, I want five acres of land, and I qualify I to spend $150,000. Depends on what you already provided the solution. Put them right next to the park. Okay, so but the first key is figuring out what do you need the five acres for. Yeah. That's the key of this. What do you need the five acres for? And then how do we now satisfy that need <coughs> without the five acres you owning it? Because you're exactly right. It could be they don't even have to buy in an HOA. Meaning, let, let's let me do it this way. You get somebody that says, I want to have a pool. I, I have $150,000 to spend, but I want a pool. How do you meet that? You want to go in an HOA that has a pool. That's right. Oh, how about this? A mobile home that has a, in the mobile home park, there's a pool. Like, that's, I remember as a kid, I don't know if this still exists, but I remember as a kid taking swimming lessons, my mom would drive me to the mobile home park that was close by our house. And that's where I took swimming lessons with at the mobile home park. Like, so you can meet it. I, I'm hoping I'm driving this point home enough to you. You can meet the benefit in any price range. Now, I'm going to give to you in a little bit here. I'm going to give you. There's basically 15 benefit words that that we're, when we when anybody tells you a feature of a home that they're looking for. What is going to be consistent in that feature, or in those features, is one of those 15 benefit words that I'm going to give you will be contained in that feature. What that means is when somebody comes to you saying, I want to buy a house and this is what I'm looking for in the home, what they're really telling you is I want one of, one of these 15 benefit words, or, and actually let me pause on that real quick. People buy homes they buy their houses in twos and threes. And what I mean by that is two, they will not buy if the home does not meet two or three of their benefits. So everyone has two or three benefits they're looking for in a home that are the driving force of their decision. And until they, uh, uh, excuse me, unless that home has two or three of those benefits, they won't buy. Meaning, when you show somebody a house and they go, oh, well, I love, love, love this piece, it's just that it's missing X, or it just if it didn't have Y, what they're <laughs> saying to you is, it's got one of my benefits, or maybe it's got two of my benefits, but in order for me to purchase it, it's got to have all two or three. Just keep that in mind that uh, as a general rule, it's going to be two or three per person, meaning if it's a husband and a wife, he's going to need two or three of the benefits, 
then the property's got to meet two of her, two or three of hers. When you have a scenario that one of the spouses says, yes, I want to buy it, what they're telling you is the home meets their two or three benefits, but the other spouse says, doesn't work, I don't want it, what they're telling you is it doesn't meet their two or three benefits. That's what this all boils down to. So your job in this, when you meet with somebody, and, and so again, let me just really, hopefully, I know I might be beating this to death, but what I found is it, this is a difficult piece to fully understand, even though you might think you're understanding. I just want to keep going at it because I want to make sure. Part of where this we don't listen and we waste their time comes from is they tell you the feature you know what that means to you in terms of a benefit, and we then assume that's what they want out of the feature. When we go to look at a house, we then talk about the benefit, but we talk about the benefit, our benefit to that feature, not their benefit to the feature, which then gets in the way of them wanting to write an offer because we're, they now think well, it does. even though it has that feature, it might not be meeting the benefit because you keep talking about the benefit it is to you, and that's where they start to feel like, you're not listening to me. You keep talking about, so let me use, give you an example. Somebody that wants the home high on the hill of beautiful city lights. Somebody on Tuesday, one of the women that was sitting over here, that said that they would want a home high on the hill because of the health benefits of getting out of the inversion. If for the buyer... They wanted the house because of privacy, and you go show the house, and you keep talking about, oh, you're going to love it up here because there's no inversion, and all you're talking about is the health benefits of being high on the hill. They're going, oh, well, that's not why, in their mind, and again, this is going on at an unconscious level, well, then this house probably doesn't work for me because that's not what I'm looking for. Can you see where the problem comes in, how this becomes an issue? If so, say yes. 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 Okay. Yes. This, that, that's how I'm testing you guys to see if you like, are you getting it or are you not? Okay. So with that in mind, they communicate one thing, but they mean something else. They communicate this, but they mean this. When I So when I said they communicate one thing, but they mean something else, that's what we're saying. They communicate this, but what they mean is this. But this is buried in the unconscious, separated because of, of it's in these discrete locations. So our job in this is to, how do we get this reintegration to occur and to cause this crystallization to happen? Now the first thing that we need to do in order for that to take place is we have got to use what I, we talked about on Tuesday, which is tool number one. Tool number one is directives. Directives are going to be things like this. Describe for me. Share with me. This color is probably not. <laughs> I probably can't see it very well, can you? Help me understand. Or tell me about. And again, the idea of this is around the brain. The way that your brain works. Finally, we have a female here. Take a look around. Wow. I said to the I'll class. Break the, break I know. I said to the class, I'm guessing on Tuesday when I said women learn this easier, that every all the women oh. went, oh, well, women, we don't need this <laughs> class. We're either. out. Yeah. <laughs> so well, thank you for contrary. thank you for coming. That directive is the idea of this is to what we want to do, and I'm going to introduce to you now, and with this, what we are trying to do is something that I call fill the grid. Now, I'm going to give to you in a little bit here, I've got a paper that I'm going to give to you guys, that is a grid that you would use to fill out this information. Now, what I mean by that is typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to them, describe for me your ideal home. Once I say describe for me the ideal home, what should they do? Start describing their home. That's right. They should start describing to me what they're looking for in a home. As they do that, now I had you guys on Tuesday, I had you not take notes, 
But we, when we're doing this with a client, we want to take notes. You're going to then write down what they talk about. Now think about this grid here. And, and really, I'm going to give you one that you can use for this. But ultimately, you could grab a blank piece of paper and draw that out on it. Meaning you, I would take up the whole eight and a half by 11 page, but draw the line, separate it like this. It, even though I'm going to give you one, it's not like there's any magic in it. Meaning you could just grab a blank piece of paper and draw that and it would be fine. Now what you're going to do though, because remember, in fact, let me just make sure you guys got it. How many of these benefits are we looking for? Three. Two or three. Two or three. That's right. Two or three. And, and, and just remember, two or three is fine if you can come up with two or three. What I'm doing when I say describe for me your ideal home is similar to what I said about filling up this cup. All I'm trying to do is get them to fill up the cup. I'm trying to just draw all this information out. Now, hopefully tying this together for you. Specifically, they should be telling me mostly pictures, but occasionally some of the decisions as well. Now, so how I'm going to use this grid is as they talk about a feature, I, I'm going to assign one of the boxes on that grid to be that feature. Meaning, if I say to them, describe for me your ideal home, and what they start to talk about is the backyard. What I would do then is this then would become the box for the backyard. Yeah, did everybody get the sign in? Okay. What we're going to do then is assign that box to that feature, and then from there, what should happen is anything they say about that feature, I'm going to take notes in that box about that feature. Now, here's the first test. To see if you, and, and it's okay if you don't know the answer to this. But this is the first test for me to know how well I've explained this process to you. So this is a test for me, not a test for you. Okay? <laughs> Why? Because you'll see when I give you the grid, it's blank. Meaning like what I said to you, you could take a blank piece of paper and draw grid lines on it. Why do I not have every one of these boxes labeled backyard, kitchen, basement, garage. Like, why do I not have those listed that way with anything? You may not have it, everyone needs a different Okay, good. good. Yeah, right on. Why else? It may not be important, you know, to them. It could be just, you know, you're looking for what, they, what the benefit they're looking for, not what you want. Okay, good. Because if those are out there like that, you'll subconsciously want to fill those for every single one. Perfect. I did great. Or I mean, you guys did great. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Patrick. That's exactly right. What happens is if, and occasionally that's, but that's usually what an agent wants to have happen is they want, like it, it would make our job easier if we just had kitchen, and then I could go around and tell me about the kitchen, tell me about this, tell me, which that is the way that most agents, by the way, have been taught is here's a list of questions that you ask them and then from that you'll know what to go look for. It goes back to what you said on Tuesday. We, we've given you leadership of the group. If you then ask us question, specific questions, then we sort of become robotons and we answer your questions without ever getting to our benefits or our features. Yes, that's exactly right. Thank you. Yeah. And that's, and that's where we get in the way, where we get in the way of, of this crystallization occurring is because we start talking about stuff that really isn't important to them. So awesome. I'm, well, I'm, you guys, I'm way excited that you guys got it. Keep in mind, so these directives, the idea of this is to fill the grid. And even though we're looking for two or three items, again, sometimes what agents want to do is just say, well, then why can't I just short circuit this? And just say, tell me the two or three most important things in your house, and then that's what we go look for. But the problem with that is, that may give you the, some information, but it's not going to cause crystallization. And why is causing crystallization important? 
because people won't buy until they crystallize. Good. I'm going to keep coming back to that over and over again because it, if you don't remember anything else we talk about, you got to remember the purpose of all of this is to cause crystallization, and the reason that's important is because they're not going to buy until they do. But as soon as they crystallize, they'll buy. And, and in fact, what you'll see on this is it is so crucial to get that buyer broker signed because once they do crystallize, they'll buy a for sale by owner on the way home. So what happens in the situation where, let's say they're first time buyers, they're young kids, you talk them into buying a home that they really don't want. Good news, I am not going to talk them into buying a house they don't want. That is not, it is not going to happen. So help me understand, how would I convince them to buy a house they don't want? Because he's a salesman? I, I guess you convince them that the features that they want are actually in the home even though they're not. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, great, thank you. Here's the good news. That's not going to happen. Meaning, you're you, I, I, probably this is the best way to say it. You're not get, you're not going to fake crystallization. So, what causes buyer's remorse then? So that's a good question. <laughs> now, um, part of what creates that there, there's an actual book actually written. That it's not written about buyer's remorse, but but honestly, it it deals with that. So let me give you the kind of the background. Um, the name of the book, if I remember right, I might be wrong on this, so don't hold me to it. But if I remember right, the name of the book is called Transformations, and I don't remember the guy's name that's written it. I could look it up and find it, but um, he he went to school to become a, a psychiatrist. And, and, and if I remember right, moved from somewhere in the East Coast out to the West Coast, went to either UCLA, USC, one of the schools other. Becomes a psychiatrist. Part of that ends up getting a job to stay on the West Coast. And in the book, what he talks about is that he moved out to the West Coast to go to school. The, every intention was to move back to the East Coast, wherever him and his wife were from gets the job, because of getting the job, decides they should buy a house. In the process, and, and this is where this is fascinating, this whole book it, it is, which by the way, it's not an enjoyable read. Like So I'm not like encouraging, <laughs> go read the book. So I, what I'm giving you is the highlights, basically. And, and why I say it's fascinating for your question is, Keep in mind, this guy is a trained psychiatrist. So he has gone through medical school. He's done his residency, done a fellowship. Like he's spent plenty of time learning how the brain works. He goes and buys a house. He experiences this buyer's remorse that you're talking about. And it is so profound on him that he goes and writes a book because of it. Now, again, it's the book is not about buyer's remorse. But the, the <coughs> one specific chapter, though, that he talks about he is talking about what is it about going and buying a house that then creates this almost depression. And, and, and the reason I can relate to it is I just talked to you guys or have been talking to you about the home I live in now. Is the second home, well I've owned many homes, but personal residence. The second personal residence that I've owned. We sold our first house, moved into this one, and when I moved into this house, I felt like, you know, George and Wheezy, you know, we're moving on up. Is it, You probably don't even know what that means, do you? <laughs> when I say George and Wheezy, do you know who that is? No. Jeff Chase, do you know? Jeff 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 Jeff. <laughs> I was going to say, this is how I find out how old people are in the room. Because I've heard the yeah. Names, but, but like, we, I felt like we're moving on up, man. We're, you know, we're, we got it made. I remember we move into this new house that was like kind of our dream home and I get in there and I was like, how come I, I felt that same depression? Now I had bought this house about the same time I went through all of this training or what we're talking about now, meaning doing this training when I went through it is somewhat I think what led me to buy the house. But I remembered having that feeling and, and to some extent in this book what he says is 
we have this dream of what life is going to look like and what it should feel like. And then we go and buy a house with these expectations of what it should be like. And then we get there and find out it's really nothing's changed. Like we're still the same person of who we were. So to some extent, I think that's where this buyer's remorse comes from is almost even like turning 18 or 21 or whatever. Like you have this expectation of what life's going to be like now that you're on your own. And you get out there and find out, like, I thought it was going to be this bliss and everything was like happily. Like we grow up hearing all the happily ever after. And we assume when we buy it. So for a buyer, they buy a house expecting happily ever after. And then it's not there. That's where really what, according to him, that's kind of what he's saying is where this buyer's remorse comes from. Is we move in expecting, and I don't think he used those words of happily ever after, but that's what we're expecting. And we get in and find out we're still the same person and that we still have challenges and nothing's changed. And it almost gets a little bit of a depression kind of a thing, but that then wears off over time. So even though we get this, we think it's going to meet those needs, and then we move in and find out we're still the same person. I haven't changed. Does that answer your question? It was a much longer answer than you expected. I guess. <laughs> a <Okay>. dissertation. <laughs> I don't know. That's right. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for in this, though, is to these two or three benefits and how the, the way to get them to discover it. And so even to answer your question more of why I say they're not, I'm not going to go convince them to buy a house that they don't want. The reason for that is, is, my job in this is not to convince them. My job is to help them discover. Because they won't crystallize. If you sell them on it, there will be no crystallization. And absolutely, you're correct. They'll be mad at you that you sold them something they didn't want. This process, I'm helping them discover what it is, which they already know. It's there. That's why they say, I'll know it when I see it. It's because all the information is there. Your job is just to bring it to the surface. That's all we're doing. Okay? The way that we have to do that, though, is we got to first get them picturing it, and by saying, describe for me your ideal home, should get them to now describe it to me in such a way that it's bringing, they're having to go in their brain to where all those pictures are stored. Okay? You follow, if you're following me, say yes. Yes. Okay. The next step on this, then, once that I have gotten them doing that, what, and actually, let me pause. Do you have any questions on this piece? I mean, we, we talked about that on Tuesday, and I'm ready to go <coughs> to the next section, but I want to make sure you're good before we do. So, okay. Does tool number one include um, the prompters? Yes, thank you. Yeah, we're going to include the prompters with that. The prompters are going to be the... What else? Keep going. Keep going. What else? Keep going. Say, more. say more. You can even say tell me more. Positive and the positive feedback along with that. And, and that positive feedback is crucial because typically people will quit talking. And the positive feedback is a way to get them to keep talking by saying, hey, you're doing a great job. Keep going. You're doing outstanding. I'm getting a really good picture. Say more. By doing that, what you're telling them is you're doing exactly what I need you to do, give me more. And by doing that, they will then continue to talk so that you can fill this grid. Okay? Now, here's what I will tell you. By nature, we typically don't spend enough time filling the grid. Meaning we just tend to want to, and, and again, especially the men, we want to hunt and gather. We want to hurry and and forgive me for saying it this way, but I think it's the best way, best analogy, especially considering that most of you are men in here. We want to skip the foreplay and go have real estate with our clients. <laughs> like that's to some extent what is what we're talking about here is we want to go, have, okay, can we hurry and get through this so that we can go and have real estate? Like we can go out and look at houses. And don't skip that piece of it. We want to, this Spending the time on this is what creates the crystallization, and that's what we're trying to do. And why is that important? Because no people won't buy until That's right. Happens. So two people remember. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not going to buy until they crystallize. So going back to what Brent said, they're not going to buy. You're not going to convince them to buy something that, until they crystallize. So you don't have to worry about it. 
The first step is getting this grid filled out. Now, so let me, t let me, so a lot of times, well, questions first before I say what I'm going to say. I'm giving you a chance to ask the question I'm about to answer anyway, so I'll just answer. A lot of times, someone will ask the question, well, what do you do then with the person who just says, I want three bedrooms, two baths, and a two-car garage? Because remember, how long do we say this? What else? Keep going. Tell me more. Until when? Until they stop talking. Yeah, until they say, that's about it. I can't think of anything else. Well, what if I said, Patrick, describe for me your ideal home. And he says, three bedrooms, two baths, two-car garage. Okay, great. Hey, that's awesome. Tell me more. Three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage. Okay, sure, that's great. What else? That's it. I need a house with three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage. He said, that's about it. What am I supposed to do? Based on what you guys have learned, what do I do? Okay. Tool two. <laughs> yeah, go to tool two. Now, so here's the thing. Before I go to tool two, what I'm going to give an, I want to give one extra chance to try to get information. So that's where I want to say on this is, I'm going to say, describe for me your ideal home, what else, keep going, tell me more, and filling in the grid here. In the event, though, I don't get very much, meaning, like, watch this. What if I said, describe for me your ideal home, and he says, well, let me tell you about the backyard. The backyard needs to be on a half an acre, and it's got to have uh, room for a garden, and it's got to have a cement pad where I can have a barbecue, and we need enough of a big enough cement pad that we could have people, probably 10 to 15 people sitting there on the the deck while um, we've got some badminton, you know, somebody's playing whatever games on the grass and like he's given me all this detail about that. And then he goes and says, and then I also want to have a basement and in the basement just, uh, I don't care if it's finished or not finished, that that's, doesn't matter, but we also want to have an updated kitchen. Now remember, every one of these is a feature, backyard, now I go basement, now I go kitchen. Let's say that he said, gets to the kitchen and goes, the kitchen's got to be updated, it's got to have this type of wood, and it's got to have this many cabinets, and it needs to have this type of a countertop, and it needs to have this type of uh, appliances, and this is where they're going to be, blah, 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 blah. What do I not know now still, though? I, I know that's a little obscure, but... You know what their mom's house looks like. Okay, maybe, maybe. But what, I, what I'm saying is he gave me a ton of detail about the backyard, he only mentioned briefly the, the basement, and then he went to the kitchen and gave me a ton of detail. What you want to do is stop and look at your notes before you go to tool two to say, like, look, think of it this way. So he filled in this box. He gave me one thing here, and he filled in this box. What I'm looking for before I go to tool two is I want to stop and look at my grid there and notice Okay, hey, gave me a ton of information about this, 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 and this, but didn't give me much on these two. Before I go to tool number two, I first am going to check in to see, can I get more about these two? What that would look like is this. Patrick, you mentioned <coughs> the basement. Tell me more about the basement. Now, so notice, all I'm using is another just directive. You mentioned the basement. Tell me more about the basement. Then I've given him the chance to tell me more about the basement. Now, what may happen based on the, the description I gave you is what he might do is say, like I said, I don't care if it's finished or unfinished. I just want to have one. Okay. And I'm going to say, perfect. That's, hey, what else? That's it. I just want to have one. Okay. I can't get any more out of it. Essentially, what is he telling me about? It's not important. Yeah, it's really not that important, which is why he's not giving me a whole lot of detail. So then I would say, okay, well, you also mentioned the garage. Tell me more about the garage. So notice, I'm just going to use the directives, but I'm going to use them a little bit more specific on certain boxes because what I'm trying to do is make sure that I've gotten all the pictures out of his head. If you're clear on that, say yes. Yes. Okay, that's what I'm going to do with tool number one. So here's another way to think of tool number one. Think of it like sandpaper. If I was, did anybody do any woodworking here? Okay, good. 
if I'm going to say, if I just cut out a piece of wood and I'm going to sand it, what type of sandpaper do I start with? And I don't need like specific. Yeah, I'm going to start with a coarse sandpaper. Why? Because you're still in the removal process. Because what? You're still in the removal process. You okay, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm knocking off all the rough edges kind of a thing. Once I've done that, then what do I type of sandpaper do I move to? And why, what does that do? It just smooths it out a little bit more. That's right. Think of this as sandpaper. We're going to start with a coarse sandpaper, meaning we're going to start really broad. Describe for me your ideal home. Like, that's really broad. That would be like the coarse sandpaper. This, once they've given me all that, now I'm going to kind of fine-tune it. So I'm looking at the boxes to see where do I not have a whole lot of information, and I'm going to go to those and say, hey, so sh tell me more about this. Share with me more about that feature. What else? Keep going until they say that's about it. Once I've done that, now that I've filled the grid, now I can start to move towards tool number two. So tool number two is going to be over here. And tool number two, actually, let me pause. Before I go to tool two, I'm going to do take one stop along the way. I'm going to have them rank them. Now, this ranking them is around getting to the two or three benefits. So when I said that they buy in twos and threes, it's possible on some of these people, especially like you guys, we practiced it a little bit on Tuesday. <laughs> But we did it with the idea of we're talking to our peers or other agents who are thinking about buying a house. When you sit down with somebody that's really thinking of buying and you say, describe for me your ideal home, they will have a lot to say generally. Now, I'll talk about the one who doesn't in a minute. But generally, they're going to have a lot to say for you to fill this grid. What's going to happen is they're going to fill this grid... You're going you're gonna to get all this information, and again, remembering what we're going to keep thinking of it as like I'm just filling up this cup. Once I've done that, they may have, you can see I've got nine boxes on there. There are times you'll use all nine boxes and have to get a new piece of paper and start writing because they're filling in even more boxes. But what I'm going to do before I go to tool two is I want them to rank them. And what I'm looking for is two or three features. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, I've got a great picture of what you've described for me here. Of everything we've talked about, tell me the two or three that are most important. Features or benefits? We're talking about features still. We're going to move to, we're moving towards benefits, but right now we're talking about the features. Yeah, great question. I'm asking them, what are the two or three and I usually won't even say features. I'll just say, of everything we've talked about, what are the two or the three that are most important? But I'm, but I'm assuming they're going to tell me features. Okay. Now, the reason I'm asking for the two or three is because that's what they buy in the twos and threes. No, I want you to notice something. Remember I talked a minute ago about like we're not short-circuiting the process? Part of that is this, meaning... The reason I say give me two or three is how many should I get if I say give me the two or three? Yeah, I'm going to get two or three, hopefully, right? What if I said it this way? Give me the three most important. What are they going to give me? Three. What if only two are important and I said give me the three most important? I'll add on the next important. And then what's going to happen then is this. You're going to now start to talk about the number three that really isn't that important. And they start, especially if the third one they talk about is important to you, that will be the one you talk about the most, which will then get them frustrated because they're going to feel like, maybe not at a conscious level, but an unconscious, they're going to feel like you didn't listen and you're wasting their time because you keep talking about this feature that they don't care about. The reason we ask two or three is we let them decide how many there are. We don't decide for them. If I said, give me the three, they're going to give me the three. Okay, so we say two or three. That's a way of communicating to them. Tell me what's most important is really what we're saying. Okay? Now, if I just said, tell me what's most important, they're going to say to you all of it is. 
Because to begin with, and this is the key thing to remember on this, at the start of this process, everything they tell you is important. Everything. But over time, what's going to happen is some two or three things are going to become really important. The other things will kind of fall away. Because they start to get excited about those two or three things, and they'll tell you, hey, if you got those two or three things, all the rest of that stuff we can deal with. We'll figure it out. That's okay. That's the key on this. Okay. So I'm going to first, after I've filled the grid, I'm going to say, give me the two or three that are most important. As they give them to me, I then typically will circle those two or three items that they've given me. Now that I've got those, now I'm going to ask, which one is number one? Which one's the most important? And then they're going to tell me. Number one. Which one's second? They're going to tell me. And then I, know, by default, know which one is third. Now again, remember, please hear this. Typically, what people will want to do is say, well, wouldn't it be faster just to give me one, two, three? And the answer is no, because I want to have them tell me, give me the two or three. Then I'm going to say, which of those is number one? Which one's number two? And then if there is a third that they give you, which one's number three? Now, occasionally, you will have somebody that says, when I say, okay, give me the two or three most important, they're going to go, well, it'd be this, this, and then I can't decide between this and this. Like you, It's possible that that ends up being four for somebody, and that's okay. But you really don't want to go beyond that, meaning you're, you're kind of wasting if you do, because they buy in twos and threes. But if somebody narrowed it down to, well, I can't, it's this one, this one, and it's either this one or this one, that they're pretty equal, I'll give them four. I'm okay with that. I'm not giving them five, though. So give me the two or three, and if they happen to give me four, I'll deal with it. But most of the time, you're going to get two or three. Which one's number one? Which one's number two? What's number three? Now that they're ranked. So now that they're ranked, we're going to take box number one here, and I'm going to start to deal with it on tool number two, which tool number two is what we call modifiers. Modifiers <laughs> are... Who, what, when, where, and how. Remember when I Tuesday started teaching you about these directives of asking, describe for me, share with me, tell me about those two type of things. Remember I said to you, if when you're acting as the agent, you cannot say anything that's not right here. And it's typically hard because we want to start asking questions when they start describing some of this stuff to us. Your job, though, is to not say anything here. Tool number two is where you now get to talk about who, what, when, where, how questions are. And the I what? Yes, yeah. So think of it this way. This is tool number one. This one's now going to be number two. Number two is where we're now asking the who, what, when, where, how question. They've described the home to me. They've given me the two or three top features. I'm now dealing with number one. So on box number one, so think of it this way. I'm now going to take box number one here. I'm going to start with, and typically I'm going to start with a directive on that box. So I'm going to, st and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. I'm going to start with a directive, and then I'm going to go over to a modifier. On these modifiers, though, here's the thing I want you to keep in mind. On these modifiers, you're typically going to need to ask between five and seven modifiers before you go to tool number three. And that's five to seven per feature. So I'm starting with tool number with box number one here. On box number one, I'm going to start with a directive, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Once I've done that, then I'm going to ask five to seven of these modifiers, or let me say it this way. Between directives and modifiers, five to seven of those, on average. Meaning, and honestly, I want you think, the reason I'm telling you five to seven is you need to ask however many it takes to get them to crystallize, is really what the answer is. But my experience tells me 
Most of the time, agents want to ask two or three of these and think they're going to get crystallization. But on, as a general rule, you're going to have to ask five to seven. I sometimes might ask 10 or 15 even before I'm done with it. So don't think of it as we got to rush through it. Is I want to ask as many of these questions as it takes to get them to crystallize. Did you have a question, Chase? I just wonder if, um, like on the modifiers, when you're saying who, if you're talking about a bathroom, how do you apply who to talking about like the most important is a master bathroom? Okay, good. Great question. You, you don't have to use every one of these. So if it does, if it didn't make sense in the conversation to ask who's going to use it, meaning like, because what you're saying really is that they're going to go, uh, me, I am, or whatever, meaning, you know, like, that would be like saying, well, so what are you going to do with the toilet? You know, like, <laughs> share with me what you do. Like, yeah, I get where you're coming from on that. Of like, so just know you don't, if it, if it makes sense to not use one of these, it's okay. But, but a combination between directives and modifiers, you're typically going to need to ask five to seven. So, yeah, great question on, on that. And I'm going to show you what that looks like for this in just one second. But keep in mind, this is where we're going to ask this. Now, what, what is missing from my list here? Who, what, when, where, why? Why? That's intentional. I'm intentionally leaving the why off of here. And the reason for that is... The why is what will bring in the feelings. And we're not ready to do that just yet with tool number two. Now, with that being said, there may be appropriate times of asking a why on this. But as a general rule, don't ask why. Because if you ask why before they have crystallized, you'll get responses like this. That would be great. Just be perfect. Be just what we need. And if they haven't crystallized, in case, just so you know, it would be great is not one of the benefits. There's 15 benefit words, and it would be great is not one of them. Okay. How you'll always, if you're struggling, so hear this. If you're struggling getting them to crystallize, what I know is you haven't asked enough of these questions. So you need to circle back and ask more of these. Now, so let me show you what that looks like. Somebody give me a feature of the house that you really like, that's like really important to you. Close that. Backyard. Okay, I'll take, I'm going to do the backyard. Um, so Wayne, if, now watch, what I, I'm going to now demonstrate to you tool number two, and I'm going to start with a directive. Okay? So Wayne, picture yourself in the backyard. That's a directive. I'm giving him a directive of, even though I'm not starting it with one of these, it is a directive of saying, I'm directing him, picture yourself in the backyard, tell me what you see. So that's how I'm now bringing in this tell me about. So picture yourself in the backyard. I always want to start with that on as a directive on any of these boxes when I'm going to now start modifiers. Because what we're trying to do is get them to access the pictures part of the brain to begin with. So I'm saying, Picture yourself in the backyard, and now are you okay with interacting, talking about it? Yes. Okay. Picture yourself in the backyard. Tell me what you see. Now, as he does this, what I want you guys to pay attention to, based on the things that he says, and in fact, even maybe write it down, what question you could ask as a follow-up to what he tells us that is going to start with one of these. Does that make sense, what you're going to do? Yes? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to have him start describing it. As he's descri describing it, if there's something that you could, a question you think that would be beneficial to ask, that would be a who, what, when, where, or how question, write it down, and then I'm going to give, I'm going to ask you guys to say, okay, what follow-up questions would we want to ask now about the backyard that starts with one of these, so that you can see how it works. Okay. So wait, describe for me. Picture yourself in the backyard and tell me what you see. Um, I like a big backyard. I like to have room enough plant a garden if I want. Have um, kids over so that they can play. I can uh, set up a swimming pool, inflatable swimming pool of some sort so that they can play. I would love to have fruit trees. Um, and I would like it to be somewhat secluded with a fence. <clears throat> okay, great. Now, based on that, 
What questions could we ask? Now remember, what we're trying to get to here on tool number two is what are the decisions he's made about this backyard? So what questions, based on what he said, could we expound upon to get more information about that are going to be who, what, when, where, how questions? Okay, Justin? How big of a garden? Okay, that would be a great one. So how big is the garden? How big would you, would you want it? Uh, nothing, not, nothing too large. Tomato plants, squash, um, maybe uh, one pumpkin. Okay, cool. <laughs> Now, now, I'm going to have you guys keep asking questions, and you, you're just going to answer their questions as if it was one person asking, okay? Okay, so go ahead. Who's going to be doing the gardening? Is it going to be you or your wife? Okay, now, so I'm going to pause you real quick. What we don't want to do is give options. Mm -hmm. Meaning, just cut it off at who's going to be doing the gardening. Because if, if you say it to, here's what I mean. If, if, well, answer the question. I shouldn't have jumped in. Is it going to be you or your wife? Definitely my wife. She, my wife's not going to do anything back there. Okay. But now, <laughs> notice we, if, you say, if you give them an option, is it going to be you or your wife? Remember we talked about our, in every question we ask, there's assumptions. What is he assuming in that? That one of them like the garden. That it's only one of them, and that it is one of those two. What if, <laughs> what if it wasn't one of Does that make sense? So I'm not trying to beat you up, but I want you to see what... Keep it sh sh shorter by just saying, so who's going to be doing the gardening? So now let's see what we get from this. So who's going to be doing the gardening? Just me, for sure. Okay, good. Now what else could we ask? What what features in the garden are you looking for? Like no, no, don't say like. See, I was watching for that. See, what? Well, remember how? Pause. I know, but it, that's what I'm Slam saying. Gel. Is let the pause. It's a pa We are uncomfortable with pauses. And so we don't want to do it. So I apologize that I'm jumping on attacking you guys. But but this is the, that is the kind of stuff that blocks crystallization from occurring because we want to say well in fact say what you're going to say like what you're well, like I don't even dare say anything yeah. now. So are, are are you looking at like an open garden concept or planter boxes or yeah see we we want to start giving them options. Yeah. Don't give the options. Give the so options. ask the question again with no options. So what type of features are you looking in your garden? That perfect. That's where we want to cut it off. Oh, I don't know. Probably nothing major. Tomato plants, maybe some squash, maybe one or two pumpkins. Um, so a small garden. Okay. Good. Does that make sense? So, because if you said like like planter boxes or whatever, he'll start to talk that way, which becomes about who. Me. Because in your gardening, do you have specific things you like about it? Oh yeah, it's got planter boxes. See, that, that's, you, this is another example of how it, that question is about you, not about him. Does, does that make sense? And we, uh, like I'm not, I know I'm jumping on you guys, but I'm guilty of it too. Every one of us in here is guilty of this. That is how we've been trained to do it. So don't feel bad when I jump on you and punch you in the face kind of a thing. <laughs> Because what I'm trying to just do is, because is, I'm as guilty of it as anybody. But can you see how when we do that, it now became about how you garden? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. What other questions? When you move into the property, do you want it done for you already? Okay, so hold on. When? So you got to, when you move it. So how could we, not a bad question, but let's change it a little. Because how move in ready of it? No. Um, that could work. I, well, I guess what I'm saying is try to think of the questions as we want them to be as general and neutral as we can that allows us, again, to discover what he wants versus what we think he should want. So a great, great question, but how could we word that differently? What condition do you want the house of the yard to be in? Okay, yeah, that, perfect. That would be the, yeah. What condition do you want it to be in? Oh, I don't know. I sure don't want to have to mow six feet of weeds, but I'd like it to be nice. Okay, now the, the one thing you can do, though, with this, so let me kind of go to where you were going, Justin, is what you could do with this is you could say, how would you feel about a yard that, didn't already have there was it was all grass not there wasn't any garden area 
How would you feel about that? Uh, that'd be fine. Okay, so now keep in mind, part of because part of what we want to do on this is re remember I said that that, that P, I showed up saying I wanted a, a one acre lot. One of the questions to ask on part of these modifiers would be to say, well, what would your feelings be if it wasn't one acre? Because let's say that, as I said, picture yourself in the backyard, tell me what you see, and all he talks about is the park, basically. That's when you would want to say something like, well, what would your feelings be if it wasn't an acre, but there was a park right outside the yard? See, if you had said that to me when I was first thinking, I would have gone, oh, that's actually even better. Yeah, I like that better because then I don't have to mow it. So then a follow-up question would be, well, how close would that park have to be in order for you to be okay with it not being your yard? Does that, does, are, is this making sense of how we're trying? What we're trying to do is sift through this to figure out what are the decisions they've made that are going to help them to crystallize. So actually, Justin had his head first. Then. Can do be one of those modifiers. Do you want... So the answer is yes, but when I'm first training you on it, the answer is no. Okay. And and meaning because the reason I say that is what I don't want you doing is just doing a whole bunch of yes no questions. Mm -hmm. Is the reason I'm training it that way? But as you get into it, absolutely, it would be okay to say, do you want a finished yard or unfinished? Like that would totally be okay. But think of it as I want you to do it with these for now. So yeah, great question. I, the reason I'm bringing that up is because I finished a transaction, my last transaction, and someone said I want room for a garage, to, for a garage in the backyard. <coughs> the whole time I was thinking, I was, why not just look for a garage versus I didn't realize they wanted to build their own garage. Yeah, but part of what they wanted was the self-actualization yeah, of building their own garden. Yeah, they wanted to make their own garden, they wanted to do their own garden. Exactly. So, so, yeah, so the answer is yes, but don't think that way yet. Sure, okay. Okay, you had a question. Well, you sort of answered. I was going to say, what, what if there was no garden, or what? Oh, okay. What if the garden was already established? Yeah. See, and that that's those kinds of things would be okay here. But think of it as I want to ask a few of these first, then I could ask the Are you? Do you have you? Question. Kind of like how? What would you think if if? The, yeah. Do you have a preference on the garden already there or not there? Which, but first. We want to get stay pretty neutral with these first. And again, think of it as we're starting here and we're just slowly drilling down into it. And and that yes, you can do that, but I it's a little premature still. Okay. Um, what other questions based on what he said about the backyard could we ask? I can still think of a bunch that because he said more than just the garden. What kind of fruit trees do you want? Perfect. What kind of fruit trees? Don't care. I like peaches. Apples would be great. Okay, good. Now, what else on the fruit trees could we ask? Because, go ahead. Where do you want? Okay, per, yeah, that, I haven't even thought of that one yet, but that would be a great one too. Where do you want it? Don't care. Okay. What else though? There's still one more. Then, and here's the thing. Well, in fact, this is probably the chance for me to teach you this. When he, now, I, I want everybody to write down an answer to this. Okay. When he said he wants fruit trees, so you don't write it down because I don't want them to cheat off of you. <laughs> when he said he wants fruit trees, how many does he want? He didn't say. Well, I know, but so, but what, just right now, if you heard him, don't answer, but if you heard him say, I want fruit trees, how many does he mean? So I want every one of you to write down how many fruit trees he wants. And then we're going to ask him how many he wants. When somebody says fruit trees, how many is fruit trees? Two to three. So you're saying two to three? I went with three to four. Okay. I went with two. Okay. More than two. Okay. Two. Okay. More than two. Okay. More than one. Okay. <laughs> so when you said, so this would be a great question. You mentioned you wanted fruit trees. How many fruit trees do you want? Well, I've got in my house right now, we have one. And because it's probably a boy tree and there's not a girl tree, it doesn't produce fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Okay, so how many fruit trees do you want? At least two. Okay, good. Which so that in in that example, we were probably safe. But let me give you a different one that people will do. And let me give you actually a real world. Okay, let me give you a real world. 
Let's say that what we were talking about right here on this box was the, a kitchen. And they said, I want a big kitchen. That means something different to every one of you. So one of the questions we want to be asking as we do this is you meant anytime somebody uses an adjective like a big kitchen, a lot of windows, big windows, a ton of this, a ton of that, you've got to do a follow-up question to figure out, remember, because we're trying to get to their decisions. What do they mean by that? Now, let me, I'm going to come to you in one second. I had, this is a real world one. I had a lady say to me, I want a big kitchen. Now, for me, when you say big kitchen to me, like this would be a big kitchen. Like that's what I, to me, like I'm thinking, okay, that's what they mean. Is something, and maybe not quite this, but something, you know, big. I asked the lady, I could say, okay, you mentioned you wanted a big kitchen. How big is a big kitchen? Now, a lot of times the way you'll get an answer when you ask for dimensions like that, depending on their personality style, they're going to say something like, well, I don't really know the dimensions. And, and if, they, if you get that type of a response, I always just say, in relation to the room, whatever room you're sitting in, it doesn't matter. But in relation to this room, how big is a big kitchen? So I was sitting in a, a conference room that was a pretty decent sized conference room. And I said, how big, when you say we want a big kitchen, see, and this is again where we get ourselves in trouble on this. They say they want a big kitchen, and then you find out they can qualify for $150,000, and you're thinking they want this size of a room for a kitchen, and you're going, they can spend $150,000. Yeah, you're, you're not getting that. Because you've gone to what it means to you. So we want to find out from them. So I said to her, in relation to this room, how big would it be? No lie. She says, probably about like this. <laughs> like, do you, is that a big kitchen to you guys? But to some people, but to you, yeah. if I would have said to you, what's a big kitchen? And even if I had said in relation to this room, not one of you would have said, probably like an eighth of this room. I don't even know if that's an eighth, but like that much of this room. But in her mind, and when I said, you mentioned a big kitchen, how big is a big kitchen? And we were sitting in a room. She said, I don't really know dimensions. And I said, well, just in relation to this room which was probably twice the size, the conference room was probably twice the size of this. And she said, like half of the size of this room. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, that is not a big kitchen. But, and I don't know if she could see it on my face or what, but what she said to me was, she said, here's the problem. When I say I want a big kitchen, what I mean is this. Where we live right now is in an apartment building. And she said, in our apartment building, it is about this narrow of a, of a kitchen. And she said, like, if somebody's standing doing the dishes, right behind is where the stove is. Like, you, you're either standing doing the dishes or you're at the stove. There's no, you couldn't have both one person at the sink and one at the stove. She said, all I want when I say a big kitchen is one person could be doing the dishes while the other person is cooking. That's what she meant by a big kitchen. But see, but you, we... They say big kitchen, we immediately go to what that means to us. And so that's the importance of these follow-up questions, is i got to ask more questions to be able to figure out what do they mean when they say a big kitchen. Okay. Same thing with a lot of windows. I've had scenarios where somebody says a lot of windows, I think of this. Like that's a lot of windows. Yeah. But they might mean this is a lot of windows. And I'm thinking that... So now we go out looking at, at houses, and or maybe it's the reverse. They're thinking this, and I'm thinking this, and I take them out and show a house. I'm like, yeah, isn't this a lot of windows? And they're like, well, no. I mean, like, meaning you go and you're like, hey, so what do you think of this house? So they look at this and go, windows aren't big enough. But they typically don't say that. They just go, mm, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just don't really like it. So you've got to figure out. Same thing if they say big windows. I've had that too. It's got to have really big windows. Well, me, big windows, I think even taller than what these are, like oh, humongous. But maybe they mean this. See, that's the point of all of this, is we just got to jump into it. So you said you wanted a bunch, if you wanted fruit trees. How many is fruit trees? Now, you know, no, notice the detail we got off of that that you wouldn't typically have gotten, though. I mean, and, and how funny, too, of... Like, I think it's a male tree, and we need a female tree to help uh, 
get some fruit going. Like, that's great. Okay, what else? Oh, you had a question you were going to ask first, though. Well, I'm trying, I, you know, could you could you ask what are the purpose of the fruit trees? Yeah, sure, do it. What are the purpose of the fruit trees? Well, I don't know. I just I wouldn't mind having fruit instead of having to go into Walmart and buy it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fine. Because to some extent, that there may be a scenario that somebody says, because I actually like to give it away. Like, I want to have enough fruit that I can go and meet my neighbors. Like, it might be something beyond just, I want to eat the fruit. So I think it's not a bad question, necessarily, to, to ask that. Sure. To me, anything that is a who, what, when, where, how question, you're good with. So what else could we ask? Are you going to make jam? <laughs> hey, hold on. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is, are you going to, doesn't start. Oh, yeah, sorry. What are you going to do with the fruit? Could what be? are you going to do with the fruit? Not that far ahead. Eat it, probably. <laughs> okay, good. But yeah, that would just remember. We want to say because if you said, "Are you going to make jam?" He'll go, "No." <laughs> or maybe yes. I don't know. But but we wanted to be more neutral to get, try to get. Hey, so what are you going to be doing with the fruit? Well, I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead. Okay. What? Well, so, so to some extent, what he's starting to tell us is. The, the fruit trees aren't really that important, meaning he like wants to have them and wants some fruit, but it's not like, meaning, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what type of cool in ground, above ground? Oh, he, yeah, good. Now, then here's the key on this. Make sure when they are talking on this that you really are paying attention, because on that one he already answered the question. So that's the only reason I would say be a little careful of making sure you listen. Because it may make them feel like, well, I just already told you. But 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 if you didn't catch it, it'd be okay. Let's see how he responds. Uh, no, just a little blow up. Just something that the, the grandkids can come and play and get wet. Yeah, and he didn't say play and get wet, but he, he alluded to, in fact, you may have even said, actually. He said inflatable. Yeah, with the yeah, he said inflatable and for the kids, I think he said. So, but which is fine. Yeah, but no, it brings home the point of what I'm trying to say, though. Of like, we really that's why writing be writing the stuff down as he does as they're saying it to you, because if you miss it and you go back and ask, they're typically not going to get frustrated if you go back if you went and asked that. It's going to be totally fine. <laughs> Unless you did it over and over and over again is when they start to go, he's not listening to me. Okay, then what size is inflatable? There you go. That's a great one. Oh, and just really small. Just small. Just something for them to get wet. Okay, good. So that, that to me, leads to another question. Any ideas? How secluded does he want? Okay, could be. Could be. But what about just how often do, they, how often do, do you have the grandkids over? Oh, probably once a year. Okay, yeah, see, that's that's just it. That's what, so, but that's, again, all we're trying to do is get access. I, I know I'm being way more stringent on this than I probably need to be, but I, I'm doing it intentionally because I want you thinking in terms of, like, ultimately we want to be accessing him, accessing this part of the where the decisions are. And if we give them yes, no, you know, do you want this or that questions, is not really getting forcing him into that part of the brain to tell you the decision. So, but I think, and what else do we not know? How many grandkids does he have? So that's the kind of stuff. So how many grandkids do you have? So I probably would have done it as how many grandkids do you have? Seven. And how often do you have them over that they would be? Oh, not very often at all. A couple times a year at the most. Okay, great. Yeah, good. What else? What else did he talk about in the backyard that we? haven't asked about. I have been trying to figure out a way using your modifiers to figure out if, you, if it's a sloping or, you know, okay. flat. How, how would you ask? So good. What would the grade of the backyard, oh, what does the grade of it need to be? Oh, no, I don't care. Um, flat, come to think of it. Now that you mention it, flat. Okay. I don't want to add to that. Great, great. Great yeah. question. It'd be tough to have a pool on it. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> It's on a slide. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I don't <laughs> see that. Uh, <laughs> that's a slip and slide. slide. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. Instead of a pool, it's a slip and slide yeah. at that point. Yeah. Well, what type of fence would you like? Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good question. I would um, hadn't thought about it, but probably a privacy fence. I would Good. See, this, <clears throat> like to some extent, 
we kind of want that type of a response of, well, oh, yeah, that's a good question. What do I want? Like, that's the kind of where we're trying to get, because now we know we're forcing him down into, he's made that decision, just not at the conscious level. we got to get him to go get it. So that was good. What else? Aside from the vegetable garden, uh, how big of a concern is yard maintenance? Um, I don't mind doing the yard. I like doing it. Um, so yard maintenance is not a problem. I'd like to do that. So. Okay, good. Yeah, th th these are great questions. That's how we want to be doing it. Is just thinking of asking like, so what would the layout look like? Where would where would the garden be in relation to the pool and all? Like these are the types of things we want to be asking him to get him thinking of what's the because and did he say what size it needs to be? I don't think he did ever. Did he? How big do you want the backyard to be? Oh boy, probably at least a third of an acre. Okay, great. So who and so some of the other things. Who else is going to be using the yard? Just you. Just you. Okay. And what what other things can you think of that we could ask? Question wise, that would now notice we've probably done beyond five to seven so far, right? So just thinking like who's going to use it, what are you going to use it for, when are you going to use it, where will where will things be in relation to other things, and how do you use it? Where now, where is it that you're going to be speaking with him at this point in time? Great question. Hopefully in the office. Ideal for me to be doing this is here at the office, and the reason for that is I don't want distractions. There are going to be times you'll maybe end up doing it at their home or at a house as you're showing property or something, but that's not the ideal. The ideal for me is I want, hey, come into the office, let's sit down and talk about it, because I don't want the distractions because i got to get them to crystallize. So, yeah, great question. All right. You understanding this modifiers piece? Any questions on that? Or what questions on that? I think in going through the role play, I was a little hesitant to get that descriptive. How do you want to use your yard? What, where do you want everything? Oh, good because, segue. Okay. You're good. setting me up perfectly. Finish, okay. go ahead, finish what you were going to well, say. Well, because I just think, when, you know, and here we are talking about what I want mm -hmm. when you get into a home is the, the accessibility to move things where I want. To plant it out, you know, even if even if a home I buy isn't, so I guess that would be one of the questions: How important is the backyard where we have rank? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but yeah, yeah, up here when you did the rank. Yes, yeah. yeah. So let me ask, let me first answer the the question that I thought you were going to ask that I'm not, that you may well, still I think, have. Yeah, yeah. But um, we're going to start this whole process up here with permission, because. Kind of what I heard you starting to ask is, like, we're getting pretty detailed into some of this stuff. And and I'm going to give to you, I think I'm going to probably wait. So Tuesday we're going to continue on. We're going to do a third day of this class. On Tuesday I'm going to hold off and give you this actual permission script. So you don't need to write it down. I mean, you can if you want to, but I'm going to give it to you on Tuesday. Is... Um, Try to say maybe I'll give it to you today. Uh, no, because I'm gonna wait. I can't be here Tuesday. All right, I'll give it to you today. <laughs> Fine, I'll give it to you today. Is that third class required to for the? No, typically I only will do two. Well, let me rephrase that. Ideally, I always want to do this as a three-day class. I only have put two typically on the schedule because um, a lot of times, like really, I should have. Next Thursday's class was Zap. I moved it to yesterday. I should have actually just canceled day three and yeah, done Zap. Been, it, yeah, I know. I should have done that. I, I let, realized last night. That's, I usually have day three and as a buffer if I need to adjust it. But knowing that, I've kind of given you more detail today than I typically would have because I know I'm going to do a third day of it. So, um, so no, you, I, I don't... I probably shouldn't say that because now nobody will show up on it. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, okay, then let me say something. I will still come to the third class. I was just asking the question. Yeah, no, you're it, good. You're the good. script or the yeah. sheet says too. Yeah, yeah. That, and but I will good. apply myself to come to that third <laughs> okay. class. Okay. So everybody else has to also. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I'll give it to you, but here's the script. In order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, I need to ask you some questions that may feel personal, maybe things you haven't considered. Is that going to be okay? So we're starting with that by telling them. Some of the things may be personal and things you haven't considered. Is that going to be okay? The reason we start with permission is because you're starting to see now how some of this stuff could get personal by me asking, hey, so, so who's going to be using the bedroom, Chase? <laughs> you and your wife, and what are you going to be doing? <laughs> and how often does that happen? <laughs> yeah, but you get the point, right? Okay. What other questions on this? Yeah. Um, so he's he's talking about all of the different features he wants in his backyard. Can you rank those then too? Or? No, don't rank those. Don't rank those. Nope. Don't rank the features in the backyard. So yeah. you shouldn't say how, how important is a privacy fence on the No, there. you could say, so you can do it in a roundabout way. Instead, what I would say is if he said a privacy fence, I you could follow it up with, well, what would the fence be made of? Privacy fence, I don't know, plastic? Okay. So, like, meaning you could say, well, what, now, then I could do a follow-up, which is kind of what your question is, to say, well, what would your feelings be if we found one that was chain link? Um, I would probably just not that big a deal. Okay. So, that's, you would do, so yes, you can ask how, how big of a deal is it, but I would prefer you do it in more of a, well, what would your, if, if he, like, even the fact that he hesitated on the fence, already, I already knew the answer that it was going to be like, well, it doesn't probably doesn't matter that much. I just, but I do want it fenced in so the grandkids don't run out and get hit by a car. Well, I mean, or something. Like that. So, how do you gonna use a privacy fence with a chain link fence? They have those, those slats in it. Yeah, you could buy slats. Oh, yeah, true. That's kind of what I'm looking for when I'm saying, well, what would your feelings be if it was chain link? What, what you're looking for by asking, what would your feelings be? Now you're finding out how much you could work with. Let me give you a quick example. The person says, I want a three-car garage. But you, but you already know what they're approved for, and that's going to be hard to find. So I say, well, so what would your feelings be, Wayne, if we found a home that had a two-car garage? But and, and, Hold on. Let me back up. If they were saying they wanted a three-car garage, and I was saying, well, who's going to use it? What do you use it for? How often do you use it? What are you going to store in it? Da, da, da. And what, when I would ask this question that I was about to ask is if in asking these modifiers, what I found out was that one of the bays of that three-car garage that they're looking for is to house the lawnmower, the bikes, its storage, da, 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 da. Then is when I could ask. That's why I was saying don't ask some of those are you, do you, closed-ended questions until you've already gotten this. Because then I can use it now to find out of saying, well, what would your feelings be if it didn't have a three-car garage, but it had a shed in the back that you could put the lawnmower in, there was storage and all that kind of stuff. And they go, oh, actually, I might even like that better than a three-car garage. Now I've figured out how. See, this is where that whole thing of buyers or liars come from is they say, I want a three-car garage. You go showing them three-car garages, and then they buy a two-car garage with a shed in the back that they like even better. But that's where buyers or liars comes from. Is they're saying three-car garage because they're just in their mind. That's what they're stuck with. But after you've asked these questions, you can start to now go ask some of these others. Like, well, what would your feelings be? See, and if I said to him, what would your feelings be if it had a chain link fence? And he said, no, I don't want to have to deal with like putting the slats in, and even with the slats, people can peek through it. Nope, not doing it. Okay, now I know that's not an option. That ain't vital. Yeah, so hopefully that makes sense on what we're saying on these things. Okay? All right. Um, I'm gonna. This has been a little disjointed, but it, so it might not work exactly right. But but I'm gonna introduce you to tool number three now. And I'm going to do it in, a, in, in this manner. Watch this. So, Wayne, we've been talking about that garage. I mean, garage, backyard. Um, and, and, and just to get us back into it, I'm going to ask, this is not part of tool number three yet. This is, for me, we've been disjointed. I'm trying to bring it all back together. Is, it, is there anything that we didn't talk about in the backyard that, we, that you brought up? Yeah, probably. Uh, it's got to have sprinkler systems. I do not want to have to do that. Okay. 
Okay, so automatic sprinklers already in place. Okay, and um, what else? Um, with my big tree. Okay. Some kind of tree in addition to the fruit trees. So what kind of tree? I don't care. That's yeah. something in shape tree. Okay. And, okay. So I was just going to say, when you said big, what does that mean? See, man, anytime I hear big, I got to go, so what does that mean? But he actually just answered it of shade. So how much shade do you want it to provide? Uh, enough for the patio at least to be covered. Okay. <coughs> so what would your feelings be if, there, if the patio was just already covered and there wasn't a tree? That'd be probably fine. That'd be okay? Okay. Cool. See, that's how we're going to use some of those questions to figure out. Because see, again, in his mind, the only way he's thinking that patio is going to get shade is from a tree. I'm just saying, well, what if it didn't have a tree, but instead it had... <laughs> he opens the door with like a childish, like he just did something great. Um, it's kind of like, what would your feelings be if it didn't have the tree, but it still had the shade because of it was covered? Oh, yeah, that's okay. That's how we want to do this. Okay, what else? As far as backyard, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, so imagine that we found that. So again, I wouldn't typically say this in if I was sitting down with him. I'm only doing it to get us back into the role play, basically. So imagine we've got the yard with the garden. It's got the fruit trees, a, ba a boy, a male and a female fruit tree. <laughs> we've got that. Yeah, Rick's like, what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So it's got the fruit tree, so it's going to bear fruit. Uh, it's got the privacy fence. we got a spot for the blow-up pool, those type of things. Okay, So everything you've been talking about. What does having that backyard mean to you? Um, just one of the things that I want. I want. Okay, so time out real quick. What that just told me is I didn't get him into the role play enough. When you get a response like that, it would just be what I want. I didn't get it. He should be telling me right now, either saying one of the 15 benefit words or describing it. The fact that he didn't tells me I didn't get him picturing it enough. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump back in. So what does having that mean to you? I and mean, then just say what you said or whatever, whatever you're feeling. Like, just go for real in your mind. What does having that mean to you? For real? For real. For real. For, yeah, for real. For real. real. For us, here's the mic. <laughs> um, no, th those are all important to me, but I, uh, no, I can't think of anything else. That sounds like a complete list of the things that okay. I, I would like in the backyard. Good, but what? So, what does having that mean to you? If you had that backyard, what does that mean to you? I don't think it yeah, is just another feature that I would like. Okay, so, but but why is it important that you have all those things? Um, it's just one of the things that I want. If I can get, if I can get those things, it would be great. If I can't get them, I would probably live without them. But those are the things that I want. They're on my want list. Okay, but why? Why? What is it about them? That... Uh, I don't know. Okay. See what what what? It, this, I'm glad this is happening because it's really and what it is showing. It is demonstrating to you the importance of this. If he, because what he's saying is he hasn't crystallized yet. He doesn't know why he wants all of those things. So it's on your want list, but why is it on your want list? Could it be that it's actually not one of the one, two, or three? As possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That is, I was going to go there. Although I said, when we started this whole thing, I said, tell me a feature that's really important to you guys. And, and you listed, I mean, is the backyard going to be a decision maker on you buying the house or no? I mean, now that you say it in that term, probably not. Okay, that's, then that's why we're struggling with it. Okay. So if he had said something like, I love gardening or Gar gardening is my ultimate hobby, would that be more of a crystallization? No. No. Not necessarily. So... <laughs> here's here the problem. Go. We actually kind of like, I'm at a point where... To go to the next step is going to be longer than what we have. So I'm thinking of, of just saying, like, let's cut off where we're at and we'll pick up on Tuesday. But I, I want to answer your question. Um, let, let me do it this way. Here's how we do this. Because, Russ, are, are you, like, trying to get crystallization? That's my assumption. Yes. Yes. Okay. But yeah, it's, guys, this is honestly one of the most important things I think you're going to learn in this process. Love what he's doing. Love this portion. Of so it. here's on this sheet. 
This is kind of throwing me a little bit for a loop, but that's okay. You guys want me to remember that too. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Where's the list of these? You won't remember that. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. just going to wait until Tuesday to give you the benefits, but I'll give them to you today and Tuesday. <laughs> on this grid here, so at the top has the permission strip. In order for us to determine whether or not I can help you any to ask you some question, you'll notice I put help, excuse me, in all caps. Because if, the reason I put it in all caps is a lot of times I hear agents say it this way. And us, I have in caps too. A lot of times people will say it this way. In order for me to determine whether or not I can work with you, and that doesn't sound the same as, in order for us to determine whether or not I can help you. So I put them in caps to make sure you know, you need to say us and help, not me and work. Okay? In order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, I need to ask you some questions. So the 15 benefit words are down there on the bottom right. Those are the 15 benefit words. So when I'm asking him the modifiers of who, what, when, where, why, I'm trying to build up to this... Um, tool number three, which is what we call the tag, which we're going to go through that on Tuesday. But when I said, what does having that mean to you? What I'm looking for is him to have either said one of these benefit words or to have talked around one of those benefit words. Sex. <laughs> and sex is one of the benefit words. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> what? I, now you know why I was going to wait until Tuesday. Man. <laughs> I doubt that's what this backyard is for for you, but the master bedroom could be for the train. I know oh, you're talking about a boy and a girl tree. <laughs> yeah, that's why he wanted a male and a female fruit tree. Remember? <laughs> well, with some fruit, it's true. You have to have both. You have to have a pollinator, so you always have to have two <laughs> apple trees. Well, that's true. What? To be fruitful, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What questions? So we're going to, I mean, I want to kind of just finish off one little piece, but we really should take a few more minutes. And then I'm going to say, let's stop, and then we'll pick up on Tuesday to finish it off. But. Uh, just because of my note taking, uh, what's tool number three? We don't have to go into Yeah, so tool number three is what we call the tag. Okay. And, and and it's going to be what does having blank that feature mean to you, okay. or why is ha why is that backyard important to you? Did you say tag or a tag? T a g tag. Tag. Oh. That's where the why is of our modifiers. Yep, that's where why, why shows up. Why do you want that? So right. could that be the same as labeling? Yes. In fact, when I say tag, I, I think of a tag like so I grew up work as a kid, teenager. I worked in my neighbor's grocery store and back then the way you would put price you would put price tags on it yeah. that's kind of what I'm thinking of is like nice. putting a price tag like we always called it tagging you got to go tag the food whatever so we put the price tags on that so yeah same kind of we're putting a label on so I just went through a crystallization moment see so that's what crystallization looks like yeah, yeah. See, so it's like oh snap yeah. because as we see that in our minds take place to make sense it's the emotion that I got with it that made me go, oh, crap. Yep. Didn't know that. Yeah. I love and, that. And, and that's what we're trying to create from this backyard. And, and, and will you be here Tuesday? Okay. We'll pick up on it on Tuesday. In fact, what I think I'll do on Tuesday is on Tuesday what we're going to do is I'm going to probably have Wayne come up here. Or somebody. I don't know. Maybe we'll do Wayne or somebody else. I'll have somebody come up. And ideally, what I'm going to do on Tuesday is I'm going to start it with asking, is there anyone in here that's seriously thinking about buying a house? And if we do have someone, I'm going to have them come up because you'll get a seat. And I'm going to actually take you through, I will take them through the process, like top to bottom. I mean, I mean I'll short circuit a little bit, meaning I'm going to shorthand it a little, but we'll take them through the whole thing so you can see what it looks like. And we'll, and we'll take it to where you can see what the tag actually looks like when we do it. Because... Like I say, the problem is me trying to get him to crystallize when we were it stop talk about this, stop talk about that, interrupts the process. So but I, I would think that probably, you know, I'm going through this question because I bought a house not too terribly long ago. Okay. But in reality, it wasn't me making the decisions. I came we we saw ten houses that I said, perfect, this is great. My wife said, and I would go back to the agent and say, <laughs> Do you have fruit trees? <laughs> <laughs> one. It doesn't produce fruit. 
I was just wondering, just general. But yeah, which I think that but that lands on why he wants if he were to buy it, the ideal backyard, it's going to have multiple because yeah, he's not getting fruit now. Is there room for all of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's a good point. Is yeah. So, all right. Thanks for being here. So Tuesday we'll pick up. Like I'll run through a reminder again, quick on this, which is helpful because I promise you, I went through this class many, many times. In fact, Rick has been through it many times, and he actually just just got had an aha moment out of it. So yeah. like, don't be frustrated on Tuesday when I go back to. I'll do it a little quicker even, but I'm going to go through this again because. If you forget this, it won't work. Meaning, because if he doesn't crystallize on why he wants the backyard, he's not going to go buy. Although it sounds like he will, but he'll buy whatever he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the husband. That's right. All right. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Okay. And, and, and did everyone did everyone sign in? This guy did. Oh, Rick. <laughs> hey, did you give them the story on the hot tub? Not yet. Oh, you guys are gonna love it. I always.